today, we want to spend a few moments honoring and celebrating a couple of incredible voices which have fallen silent in this last year. Voices that embodied the essence of diversity and inclusion, champions of our cause, true believers in our mission. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Dave Baker and Howard Ross as we pay tribute to these fallen friends of the forum, Robbie Gregg and Sue Moyer. I'm going to start with a story because I think historical context matters and should be remembered. When I came to St. Thomas in 1993, I made it known that I wanted to be involved in the multicultural and diversity efforts. A colleague gave me a flyer, yeah, that was back when there was only paper, advertising the Multicultural Forum, and I registered and attended in February of 1994. At the end of the half-day conference, I volunteered to be part of the planning committee for next year's conference. A month or so later, I was invited to a meeting at the Minneapolis Community College where I met Sue Moyer and a small team of committed volunteers like myself. Sue deftly guided us as we talked about our experience at the forum and what the next year might look like. A few weeks later, Sue called me to say that MCC had decided not to continue supporting the forum, and she asked if St. Thomas might be interested in taking it over. I talked with our dean at the time, and he agreed, and the rest, as they say, is history. Sue came to St. Thomas and led the forum planning and operations, also taking on helping graduate business students with careers, services, and internships. Her passion for building relationships and connecting people with the resources to help them achieve their goals drove the Multicultural Forum to grow from less than 100 attendees to nearly 1,000. Never one to shy away from challenging people, she, along with Bill Wells from the Black MBA Association, were instrumental in bringing in nationally recognized speakers like Merle Evers Williams, Yolanda King, Minnesota Governor Arne Carlson, Jane Elliott from the Blue Eyes Brown Eyes Experiment, Google that sometime and find out why that was a courageous move, as well as starting to bring in CEOs from major corporations to talk about the value and necessity of a diverse workforce. Through those years of growth and challenges, Sue was the glue and the guide to keep all the moving, many working parts running in concert to grow the scope and mission of the forum. As Sue's other responsibilities grew at St. Thomas, she was responsible for hiring our current executive director, Steve Humrichhaus, in 2002. Sue left St. Thomas in 2007 to join the Twin Cities United Way and managed the caring connection connecting thousands of volunteers with nonprofit projects. Again, it was her passion and skill for building relationships to connect people with needs that drove her success with United Way. Over the years of working with Sue as a colleague, she became a friend and a mentor. I will never forget the day nine years ago <clears throat> when she told us of her cancer diagnosis. She asked for nothing but support and prayers and our continued friendship. And she began fighting this monster with her ferocious faith and determination. She took on the persona of Sassy Susie, wearing red shoes, sassy hats, and wigs when necessary, never letting it stop the work she found so important and fulfilling. She would battle the cancer back into remission, only to have it rear its ugly head a few months later. She kept up this fight for nine long years with class and sass, even managing to be awake for her own wake a week before she died. She died on February 5th, 2019, as she lived, courageously, and as her husband of Paul, husband of 44 years, Paul, told me, a bit of a rebel to the end. As we sit here today in the middle of this year's Forum on Workplace Inclusion, we stand on the shoulders of Sue Moyer and the many others with the vision and drive to leave the world a better place. I'd like to close with a poem written by my 90-year-old aunt, Shirley Ensrud. It is titled, Boundlessness. One is surrounded by peers, associates, family, friends, opponents, 
and they are not merely a frame, but also a mirror reflecting one's influence. Thank you, Sue, for your influence, friendship, inspiration, and legacy. A week before Christmas, we got the news that Robbie Grape was caught. And uh, for those of us who knew him and worked with him, it was terrible. For those of us who had the privilege of calling him family, it was devastating, and obviously still is. Um, Robbie was a really remarkable man. He was the connective tissue, in a way, of an entire generation of diversity leaders. I'm sure that if we had the time and we just asked people to stand up, there would probably be hundreds of people in this room who either knew Robbie or, more importantly, were connected through Robbie. He had a remarkable capacity for looking for the best in people. And I've never known anybody in my entire life who got so much pleasure out of helping other people. And he was the guy always standing one step behind. Uh, he was an enormous friend to the Forum. I know he served on the board of the Forum for many years and probably was here from the very first start. Robbie was so many things to so many people. Uh, but most of all, he was a deep commitment to community, to a community of belonging, that he, growing up as a, a black gay man in a predominantly white community, didn't feel when he was younger. So, you know, I thought about this a lot, and there probably could easily talk for an hour about Robbie. But I thought that rather than do that, put together um, some images of him with what was most important to him which was his community, the people he loved, and who loved him.
Rest in peace, brother. We'll never forget you. Thank you, Dave and Howard. I would like to add a few words of my own reflections on how these two individuals touched my life. Sue Moyer, as you heard, hired me. At the 2002 forum, sitting at a table, just like all of you, having a conversation with the random people around the table as she observed. The job was part-time, no benefits, just me. There wasn't even an office or a desk. I'd come from doing training and development work for an international legal affiliation that 9-11 essentially ended. The forum was a job, and I needed one, but it was no dream job, and she knew that. I remember several times Sue asked me to commit to staying just that first one year. Sue, 17 years on, I think I kept my promise. As, <laughs> Thank you. As for Robbie, what can I say? He was my conscience and my guide, always gentle in his persuasion, and always a forum champion, ready to shout from the rooftops if need be, so much so that last year we presented him with our Friend of the Forum Award. We roomed together at conferences and talked on a regular basis. He was always there for me, and so both logically and with great love, he was the choice to be my best man at my wedding after marriage equality became the law of the land. I still have, I still have some, of voicemail, some of his voicemail messages so I can always remember his voice. So many of us gathered here know each other because of Robbie and his voice lives on in us. Let's take a moment to remember Sue and Robbie, and indeed anyone who has had an impact on our lives as people who believe in diversity, equity, and inclusion. If the people you were thinking of just now are here with us in this room or in this world, I encourage you to reach out and let them know how very important they are to you. Never wait until the only opportunity is in tribute. With that, have a productive and courageous afternoon, and we'll see you back here for the networking reception in the marketplace. Now go and build a bridge. Thank you. Thank you.